That is where you find Regional 2 in Albany, and you will also find the one seed Iowa there. Of course, Iowa winning their third straight Big Ten tournament. Uh, they will be a one seed for the first time since 1992. Of course, Caitlin Clark has taken the entire college basketball world by storm, but that hasn't really been the story ever since the bracket's been announced. Instead, it's been like, what does the committee have against <laughs> Iowa and Caitlin Clark? Because you go up and down. You got Colorado as a five seed here, Kansas State as a four. Keep in mind, Iowa and Kansas State split the season series this year. Uh, likely either LSU or UCLA in the Elite Eight. That will work itself out, as you see there, the two or three. So they won't have to play both of them. They'll play likely one of them. But uh, nevertheless, you want to call it the group of death, the region of death? I, I, I don't know, Charlie, but this, this seems a bit unfair. To, to, to CC. CC. I, I, this, <laughs> you know, I, I agree. I, I, it's something I think the committee could have fixed. I don't think we had to have LSU in this region necessarily. It wouldn't have messed with any of the bracketing procedures. Uh, it's unfortunate. I think most of us on the media side were rooting for LSU and Iowa to be in separate regions, separate from South Carolina, and maybe separate from one of the other power teams in the – in the country, so this is this is the region, the toughest region. So it's, you think that we talked about South Carolina having the easiest path, that Iowa being the number two team on the board would have the second easiest path. That's clearly not the case. But Sam, I think your point about UCLA and LSU is spot on. We have to remember they don't have to go through right. both of them. They're just going to have to beat one of them if it gets there. But I think there's some other things you can, other teams you could throw into the mix there too. Kansas State is looming. In the Sweet 16, perhaps, for Iowa, they played twice during the regular season, and Kansas State won one of those games. Right. There's a Louisville team that maybe hasn't had the most even of seasons, but they've made five straight Elite Eight. So it's a different personnel grouping, different roster, but Jeff Walls is still the coach, and he's been to five straight Elite Eights. Yeah. So there's, there's other really difficult teams that, that we're not even talking about that are outside the, the top two or three. Let me ask you this, and I, and I asked Charlie this on our call earlier today, but Autumn, you were there with the committee. Mm -hmm. So we get our bracket, right, and we're all looking at it. <laughs> at. At some point, does logic come in to play? I mean, we talk about all these factors that the committee weighs in, strength of schedule, RPI, net, a anything you want to throw out there. But, like, I I'm looking at it, and, like, it doesn't really make sense. Like, I feel like we could have avoided – some of this, but I don't know. Have you heard anything from the committee uh, about that or how they make some of these decisions? Or more so, they were looking at that UCLA uh, game, why they put that in the, their region. I mean, the Pac-12 just having that balance with UCLA being a two seed, also Southern California being a one seed, and then Oregon State being over that three seed, and for Stanford being a two seed. So they were more so concerned about, about the Pac-12 balance. But then, as you mentioned, LSU, Charlie, that could have been another you know, a team that was faced up in another region. So in particular, when they when I brought up this Albany 2 region and why it was so tough, they really circled on that Pac-12 matchup and that Pac-12 balance that they were trying to disperse. I just want to say, we haven't even talked about Colorado yet. Yes. And that's the five seed in this region. And that's that's a tough matchup. Speaking of, of familiarity, Colorado played Iowa in the Sweet 16 last year, and that was a Fairly close game. Iowa points. won. Yeah. But I know they haven't had the best end to the season. But uh, being at the Pac-12 tournament, J.R. Payne was really uh, – she, she was confident that this team is not making the same mistakes and having the same issues they did towards the end of the regular season. And they had that tough double overtime loss to Oregon State. So, I also don't want to say let's not count out Colorado here. Yeah, I remember calling the first and second round of Colorado's games and, and talking to J.R. Payne last year at Duke. And you could sense that something was coming from there. And then they bring back all of their players. I mean, it's a very blue-collar kind of team. But uh, so Colorado potential uh, bracket buster there. Um, Autumn, who do you got as a bracket buster potential here in Albany 2? Give me Princeton. Okay. I always bet on Princeton every single time yeah. that I look at an NCAA tournament bracket because of the fact that they are a sleeper every single time and they play a non-conference schedule that battle tests them and gets them ready for March. When you look at this team, they are high on defense. They possess the top 20 defense in the nation. Caitlin Chin, the two-time Ivy League first team and just player of the year, how she's been able to 
take this team to new heights. And in the regular season, they beat Oklahoma. They have a single-digit loss to UCLA. So they are battle-tested. They have been challenged. In last year, in just years prior, Kentucky back in 2022, we saw them knock them off. And then also NC State back in 2023. So we can see if they can try to slow down this Iowa offense that loves to push pace and run. But it's going to be tough with Caitlin Clark on your team. Like Caitlin Clark <laughs> against Caitlin Chen. Like, how fun was how fun would that be? And Caitlin Chen is, to Autumn's point, a very underrated player. I mean, playing in the Ivy League, you don't get a lot of big time exposure on television. But she probably will next year because yeah. she's going. She can't play as a grad student at Princeton in the Ivy League. She's going to end up at one of the big conference schools like some of her Ivy League cohorts did at USC this year, and we saw what they were able to do in getting USC to a number one seed. So. Get used to the name Caitlin Chen, yeah. even if she's not quite good enough to get past Caitlin Clark. Well, and we've seen plenty of Ivy League players transfer out. I mean, don't look further than USC. I mean, they're right. That's like Ivy League of the West right now with some of the transfers <laughs> that they've gotten. Um, all right, so you don't have to look very far in this region for some potentially, like, great matchups. Like you said, Charlie, you look at this, at this Sweet 16, and you, you're looking at a potential Iowa-Kansas State matchup. But uh, is there a... A potential later round matchup that, that you would like to see in this one? Well, I think an LSU-UCLA game could be the game of the tournament. I think it, it could be that good. It's, it would be highly physical, but it's a bunch of highly skilled players. It's a lot of experienced players. And at one point, going back to even mid-January, UCLA was easily considered the second best team in the country. They had a little fall off. They had some injuries. That Lauren Betts sat out a few games. They haven't quite gotten back to that form yet. But if they've had a bunch, they've had a big break now. If the Bruins can kind of hit the reset button, I think they're a potential Final Four team, even a championship game kind of team. But getting through LSU, the defending champs, with all of that talent, would certainly not be easy. I think that's the game I'm really hoping we get because I think it would be a great one. I'm always looking at the 11 seeds to make some havoc, some chaos, and March Madness. And when you look at the 11 seed, you got Middle Tennessee, who's already knocked off Tennessee this season, of course, without Rakia Jackson. But what they've been able to do still in their non-conference, uh, challenging Michigan and also Princeton, a team I was just high on as a sleeper with one of the best defenses in the nation. This is a consistent NCAA tournament team that comes in with Coach Rick and is able to be pushed at a high level with that tough offense and tough defense as well. I know Jeff Walls comes in and prepares his team at a high level. It's just one team that I'll keep my eye on. I'm not picking that in my bracket, but I would circle them if I was looking at a potential upset. We haven't even talked about a potential LSU-Iowa rematch. I mean, give the drama here, okay? <laughs> that would be for a spot it. in the Final Four, a rematch of the national title game. Sign me up. Yeah, that is, uh, gosh, this entire region. I mean, I, I don't. If it goes chalk, then then you're in for a, a huge Sweet 16 and just must must see television.